Hi, this is Rob and I'd like to welcome you back to Engineers Academy. In this video, we're going to cover some of the basic principles for learning outcome one. We are going to examine work and basic manufacturing processes. In manufacturing, we can consider any task of work to be in one of three categories. The first and most important category is value added work or VA. This is any work that is done that changes the nature or form of the product in line with the customer requirements. For example, it might be an assembly operation, a welding operation. It could be a machining operation where material is removed or a finishing operation like painting or surface finishing. So in summary, any manufacturing work that is completed that the customer wants and is willing to pay for can be considered as value adding work. The second category of work to consider is non-value adding work or NVA. This is any work that is required under the existing conditions that enables the value adding work to be done. So for example, we can't add any value work unless we have to change the tools over, maintain the machines, inspect the parts or move parts to and from the machines and either this type of work that the customer doesn't actually want to pay for but needs to be done to add the value is termed as non-value adding work. It may also include such things as health and safety or any other activities necessary to meet legal requirements. So in summary, the work required to enable us to add value is termed non-value adding work. Our final category of work is work that is neither value adding or non-value adding and is therefore what we would term waste. Waste is all work that is unnecessary. In lean manufacturing our objective is to maximize all value adding activities, minimize all the non-value adding activities and eliminate all the waste activities. Now we've looked at categories of work, let's turn our attention to something I hope we all know, the task of making a mug of tea. Here we have listed 12 typical steps that we may take to make a mug of tea. First, we would fill the kettle with water and turn on the kettle for it to boil. We could then go and collect the mug. We could collect the tea bag and place it in the mug. We would then have to wait for the kettle to boil once boiled, we could pour the boiling water into the mug. Then we would have to wait for the tea bag to steep in the water to get to the right strength. We get a spoon, stir the tea and remove the bag. We could collect some milk, add the milk and stir again, collect some sugar, add the sugar and stir. Then we've got our finished cup of tea that we could deliver to whoever's going to have it. This task of making a mug of tea could be termed as a process and the each of the individual steps could be termed as process steps. As well as listing all our process steps for the, our process of making a mug of tea, we could also create a visual representation of it using simple process flowchart, something like it's drawn here. Let's now look at each of the process steps for our mug of tea process and see how they fit in with our categories of work we went through earlier. If we look at the following 1, 5, 6, 7, 9, 11 and 12, on the face of it these steps change the nature or form of the product so we could consider them to be value adding steps. Likewise, 2, 3, 4, 8 and 10 are all required to be able to make the mug of tea with the current process, but don't actually add value. So we can consider these to be non-value adding steps. Our categories we have for our process steps seem fairly clear cut. However, if we examine each a little more closely, we will see that perhaps it is not quite so straightforward. Take step one for instance. 
If we consider the filling of the kettle, if we are making one mug of tea and we put more water in the kettle than is necessary, then we are creating waste because we use more time to fill it, more time to boil it, and more energy is wasted in the process. In step two, we have categorized collecting the mug as non-value added. And this is fine if the storage is situated quite close to our workstation. However, if our storage area is positioned a long way away, this step may become a waste as it would incur unnecessary transportation time. The same principle would apply for collecting parts or materials in steps three, seven, eight, and 10. In step four, we have waiting for the kettle to boil. We've got this categorized as non-value added, which is fine if we've got the exact amount of water that we require in there. However, if we've overfilled the kettle, this time would become waste as we'd be unnecessarily waiting for the kettle to boil. In step six, we have waiting for the tea to steep as value added, which is good because it's exactly what the customer wants if we do it for the right amount of time. However, if we leave it for too long a time or too short a time, it would either be too strong the tea or too weak for the customer. Therefore, it would be waste as it would be a reject as the customer would not be wanting the tea at the end of the process. Stirring occurs in steps seven, nine and 11. We would possibly only need to stir the tea once at the end. So these processes would need to be examined to see if they are unnecessary. And again, if they are, they would become waste. We have categorized steps nine and 11 as value added. This was adding the sugar and the milk. These will only be value added if the customer requires them. If they do not require either milk or sugar, then it would be waste as again, it would not be to customer specifications. Hopefully you can now appreciate that what seems like a straightforward process when closely examined step by step will reveal opportunities for improvement or refinement. This is one of the key principles in lean manufacturing where every process that is undertaken is reviewed to look for opportunities for improvement where waste in the process can be removed. In lean manufacturing, investigating and categorizing the process step by step can help us to see where the problems and issues are and help us to start thinking about how we can make improvements to our production process. Analyzing our mug of tea process has highlighted issues and revealed areas of potential waste. Examples of some of the things we could do to improve our process from our analysis include changing our workstation layout to ensure that tools and equipment are close to hand. Mugs could be located in the work area. The teaspoons could be put close by. This is all to ensure that there's no unnecessary travel to collect them. In addition, we could replace the kettle with an instant water heater. This would eliminate filling time of the kettle. It would also reduce waiting time that we would have for the water to boil when we had the kettle. And it also improves on unnecessary waste of energy. We could consider some more radical changes such as the introduction of instant tea. We could only do this if we could ensure the correct quality for the customer, but if that was satisfied, it would eliminate waiting time for the tea to steep. It would ensure the correct tea strength every time and would have no bags to dispose of at the end of the process. Another simple change to consider would be to introduce milk and sugar dispensers. We could have instantly our milk and sugar to hand at the right quantities without having to travel to go and collect it. Not all ideas are always practical, but at least if we generate them, we can consider them and they can be investigated to see if they are suitable to be implemented. A key principle in lean manufacturing is to constantly analyze processes and look for ways that they could be improved. Hopefully now you should understand a little bit more about work and the categories of work and how they fit in with our process and process steps. Mm -hmm.